So uh, Casey Carl, let's start with you. Uh, what can the voters expect and what will they see when they go into the uh, voting booth this year with 35 candidates in our, in our relatively new RCV system? Well, Tom, so what we have for all the voters is a one-page ballot, front and back. It's 19 inches, which is the largest ballot size allowed under state law. It allows us to put all 35 of the mayoral candidates on the front, as well as the council races on the front of the ballot. And let's just tell our listeners that if you tune into our live stream, um, the livestream.com URL, you can see an image of this ballot. We're showing that right now. And we'll post it on our website as well. We will, yeah. Right, so I did bring a sample ballot. This isn't the official ballot, obviously, mm -hmm. but it shows you a sample that uh, reflects the mayor's race on the front as well as the council. On the reverse are the park races, both the district and at large, as well as the uh, board of estimate taxation, and also the two ballot questions related to the plain language charter that will be in front of the voters. Great. Now, I think when you have 35 um, choices on a ballot, it would be pretty important as to who is up in the top one or two or three or four or five. How is that determined? State law dictates that every candidate in a race has an opportunity to be at the top of the ballot in their race. And there is a, a mathematical formula that the Secretary of State's office has that we uh, use and compute. And that formula allows us to enter in the total number of candidates in a given race divided uh, with the total number of pre-registered voters within the district that that race covers. So either if it's a ward or a district versus at large citywide. Um, and then that formula tells us how many ballots have to be produced with a specific candidate at the top of the ballot under that race for all of our precincts. Okay. So depending on where you vote, your, val your ballot is going to look different as far as the order of the candidates, how they appear on there. Correct. And it sounds like if we had any more candidates, it'd be hard for us to legally have that all in the right size ballot. Is that... Is that true? I think we could have uh, more candidates for mayor. There's 117 precincts, so with 35 candidates, we're well within the ability to make mm -hmm. sure that each candidate appears at the top of the ballot. Uh, oh, I was talking about the, you'd mentioned earlier that there was a size, right? That, that it could be no bigger than 19 inches? 19 inches is the largest ballot size, which uh, would, of course, potentially push us into more than one page. Yeah. We're at one page now. So what about a sight impaired person or someone perhaps who uh, had language issues or, or would have a hard time just physically manipulating the, um, the voting process itself? Sure. So in addition to the tabulator in each precinct, there is a machine called an AutoMark. And the AutoMark is, is an assistive uh, marking device that voters can use to mark their ballot. Um, it essentially helps them to read the ballot and to mark their choices on that ballot. And all of our precincts are equipped with an auto mark for those voters who need assistance in marking their ballot. That's incredible. You think people know that? Um, we have had, it, the auto mark was required under the Help America Vote Act of 2002. Okay. And so we have had those machines for, for some time now in the past several elections. Um, we also provide that information to various communities that require that type of assistance so that they can help us spread the word that those auto mark devices are available in all 117 precincts as well as at City Hall for in-person absentee voting. That's great. So one more question for you before sure. we move on. Voting machines. We got some new voting machines. Yes. What's that about? So this year, with our uh, with our partners Hennepin County, we have purchased brand new voting equipment uh, through uh, a contract with Election Systems and Services, which is a company headquartered out of Nebraska. And the ESNS model we're using is the DS200. It's a new tabulator device that voters will see in the polling place on election day. Uh, we are doing a mock election started last Thursday mm -hmm. at City Hall, and uh, we are going out to four different schools this week from 3.30 to 7.30 each night and encourage voters to come and not only cast a sample ballot using the ranked choice voting process, but also to test the new equipment, see it, touch it, mm -hmm. and interact with it. Um, it essentially is an improvement on the past equipment we had. It's called the DS200. It improves uh, the voter interface experience and includes more messages that allow a voter or inform a voter if an error has been made on their ballot so that they can correct that before casting it. We're very pleased with our testing so far with the new equipment. Len, I'm Michelle Ali Marati. And I'm Tom O'Connell. See you next week. And as always, please take care of yourselves.